Um, I'd like to welcome you all here on behalf of, of the hosts of the conference, the Department of Rural and Community Development. Our department's mission is to support vibrant, inclusive and sustainable communities all over Ireland, in both urban areas and rural areas. And I think everybody will agree that one of the very biggest challenges that our communities face in Ireland today is how to welcome our new arrivals. And I think it's a sign of how important that issue is to so many people that we have been oversubscribed for the, for the conference here today. We've had a waiting list and uh, I think the interest in it shows the passion and the commitment and the concern that so many people have about how do we face this challenge, this biggest challenge I think that our communities in Ireland are facing. It's fantastic to see such a strong turnout for the conference today. Such a wide range of stakeholders represented from the local development companies to volunteer centres, national organisations, local government officials and local community groups and networks. I know that the work that you do is so important and uh, I think it's great to have this opportunity today to have some open dialogue to, for us to highlight good practice, to identify what the challenges are that we face and to brainstorm effective solutions in developing support for our new communities across Ireland. And I say, as I say, that the space filled up so quickly is a sign of how interested and how important this, this challenge is for everyone. So as I said, our department is committed to supporting communities across Ireland. And to that end, we fund and administer a range of suites and programmes to provide supports to groups, including migrants, asylum seekers, refugees and beneficiaries of temporary protection. And many of you will be familiar with, or in fact are delivering some of our programmes. For example, the Social Inclusion and Community Activation Programme, or SICAP as it's commonly known, the Leader Programme, the Community Development Programme and the Empowering Communities Programme, to mention but a few. However, all of our funding and all of our programmes would amount to nothing without the commitment and the support of those of you who are at the front line. The work of the community and voluntary sector, the local development companies, the volunteer centres and the community groups and local networks is so vital. And you have done staggering work over recent years in, de in developing and delivering programmes to your communities. To say that the context that you operate in has been changeable would be a total understatement. In the past four years, as we know, we have all had to respond to monumental challenges, starting with the pandemic, followed by the outbreak of the terrible conflict in Ukraine, and then the unprecedented numbers of new arrivals into our communities seeking sanctuary and support here in Ireland. And to your credit, you as a sector have risen at, to all of these challenges and continue to deal with the challenges on a daily basis. Your adaptability, understanding and empathy and all very importantly your reliability as partners with us has enabled our department to be as flexible as possible in overseeing the implementation of a variety of our funding supports and schemes. And when we needed to pivot to address a new challenge, you pivoted with us. And for that, we really, we're really grateful and we really do appreciate the terrific work you do. And I know it's often, it's not very often that, that we take a chance to pause and to reflect on the work we do. But I think it's important that we should. And today is an opportunity to reflect. To reflect on what's working well, but also to acknowledge that not everything is working as much as we would like. To work together to seek how we can overcome the challenges together to see if we can <coughs> brainstorm new ideas and, and have an impact. Because the work you do does have an impact and I'm sure there are many, many people who have arrived in Ireland in the last couple of years who would acknowledge that the work you do helped them to start integrating into their new home. I mentioned the SICAP programme, which as you know is the country's primary social inclusion programme. It aims to reduce poverty and promote social inclusion and equality in Ireland through supporting communities and individuals using community development approaches. And under SICAP's new communities target group, 11,000 migrants have been supported since 2018. 
and along with 12,800 refugees and 6,000 asylum seekers under the six years of the previous programme. And these supports range from inclusivity events and language supports to initiatives to help new arrivals find employment. And of course, as I said, SICAP has also had to adapt in recent years to meet the needs of the new arrivals from Ukraine. And in support of that, the department provided uh, 5 million in 22, 2022, 10 million in 2023, and a further 10 million to, in 2024. And this funding was provided to the local development companies to assist them in delivering dedicated supports, firstly to Ukrainians, and then this funding was extended to cover international protection applicants as well. Over 13,000 Ukrainians, Ukrainian individuals have received support since <coughs> 2022 under SICAP, and many more families and children engaged in SICAP events and activities. And a substantial amount of work is also being carried out locally through SICAP to tackle <coughs> racism, to support migrants, and to promote integration in communities. And in 2024, over 100 actions are featured in the local annual plans featuring new communities, traveller and Roma, migration rights and integration as their primary focus. Our department also provides funding of 2.3 million for the Empowering Communities programme and 1.7 million for the Community Development programme, both of which have been instrumental in promoting migrant rights and integration efforts across Ireland. The Empowering Communities programme aims to enhance community access to key services and empower local communities to craft their own response to area-based poverty, social exclusion and the resulting consequences with the support of the Local Community Development Committee in the local authority. The ECP has been essential in encouraging integration of new communities in several areas and it has functioned effectively as a first step in assisting new communities to integrate locally and interact with other community groups. Likewise, the Community Development Pilot Programme aims to trial community-led interventions that address poverty, social exclusion and inequality and promote human rights. It's vital that the needs and challenges facing the most vulnerable and marginalised in our communities, including migrants and new communities, are empowered to engage, share their experiences and have their voices heard. And the CDP provides that opportunity. I know too that substantial work is, undergoing, uh, is ongoing through the network of the 29 volunteer centres across the country and they've been heavily engaged in sourcing volunteers to address the many requests for specific roles to assist in the response to the Ukraine crisis and new arrivals in general. The volunteers and staff in the, new, in the volunteer centres have been working tirelessly to help the new arrivals, providing information, support and assistance. And in 2022, the department secured half a million euro for volunteer centres to deal with the increased activity. And this was increased to one million euro in 2023, and again, another one million in 2024 to continue that work. The range of services provided by the volunteer centres includes information and outreach services, recruiting volunteers for translation and interpretation, assisting in local rest and accommodation centres, and providing volunteer drivers to provide transport services, particularly in rural and isolated areas. And in recent times, volunteer centres have also worked to encourage new arrivals to volunteer themselves in their new communities as a great way of integrating into the new communities. I believe some of our speakers later today will give more of an insight into all of this work that is ongoing. And it's just a small <coughs> overview of the range of work that our department supports to help um, Irish communities welcome the new arrivals. And throughout the day, I'd encourage you, if you have the time, to go and visit the exhibition area and see some of the videos to get more information on the sort of work that we're doing. There's no doubt that the work that you as a sector, the local development companies, the volunteer centres, local community groups, inter intercultural networks and local government all of you, the work that you do, has a profound impact on the lives of many. So once again, I would like to thank you for your attendance today and the opportunity to welcome you on behalf of the department. Your expertise and passion and commitment has helped to steer this country's integration efforts 
through some very turbulent waters. And it's, it's not, uh, uh, we're not saying that we're plain sailing yet by any <coughs> means, but I think the commitment and the track record is assurance enough that together we can overcome the challenges we face. And to reflect more on these challenges and on what the outcomes we hope to get from the conference today, I'd like to now introduce you and hand over to Minister Joe O'Brien, the Minister for Integration and Community Development. Minister.